Welcome everyone to another getting together of studying God's Word. This is a series. The series is entitled The Life of Abraham. The Life of Abraham. If you're enjoying these videos, you can go to YouTube, tap in the search bar Arcadia, A R C A D I A, Arcadia Church of God of Prophecy. And also we're on Facebook. So the title of the sermon is The Life of Abraham. And as I stated in an earlier, in, in session one, series one, these are just highlights. Uh, these are just things that we put together to kind of give a, a brief synopsis of things that happen in his life, although there are chapters uh, concerning this. So we're just studying things that will, I believe that we can relate to today that we will also see applies to us. Let's bow our heads together bow our heads today and ask the Holy Spirit to come in and anoint my mouth, my lips, my heart to bring forth that which he would have me to bring forth. And trust, Lord, that you would, by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Father, touch the hearts of those that's receiving these series, Lord, these messages, that we can glorify you and worship you. Abraham was, was a Gentile. God called him out of or of Chaldees, we know that God chooses, in a lot of cases, ordinary individuals, and I classify myself as that. I'm not highly educated. I love the Lord, and He called me out of darkness into light, and found a, and I found that I had a place with Him that I could uh, teach and preach and and worship Him. So. Uh, that's the way it was with Abraham. We're going to continue on and talk about Abraham. He, we're in Genesis chapter 17, verse 18, by the way. Abraham is attached to Ishmael. Abraham loved Ishmael. He loved him through his whole life, Abraham. We know that in times past in our lives, and I want to be very care careful how I frame this, we do things that we feel we feel bad about, uncomfortable, or sad about. But when under the new covenant, when we come to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, those things, sins especially, the greatest thing is forgiven, and then salvation comes into our lives. So that I think there's times in all of our lives that we regret the things that, some of the things that we did in the past, but we pray that the Lord will help us to bring that stronghold down and understand that when we did things before we received salvation, no excuse for it, but we understand that God's a forgiving God and even through our lives we remember things that we kind of keep to ourselves, personal things. And this is the way it was with Abraham. So don't tell me that sin is a little nothing or that sin is something you get by with. Abraham committed a sin. We've talked about that. You can go to series one and see that. He committed sin when he got out of the will of the Lord. The Lord, when he promises us something and makes a covenant with us, he is not going to break it. Now, we can break that covenant in, in a variety of ways. Go back into the world, go back into the darkness, whatever the case may be. But God is not going to break that covenant, and he will always hold us to that covenant that we made with him. So in other words, when we come to repentance and we receive salvation, we go into covenant with God. And however we ask him into our lives is on an individual basis. So uh, when we say, Lord, if you'll save me, I'll work for you and, and, and do the things you want me to do, that's a covenant. Now, we can break it. If God, if God asks us to, to go to a foreign country and we don't feel like we should, but God's not going to break his covenant. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So when we sow certain things in our life, uh, as again we receive salvation, those things become weeds. I'll, I'll characterize those things as weeds. And they'll try to choke out the word of God and tell you, well, you know, you were, I was not a drunkard or dead dope or anything. I'm, 
I'm not any better than anybody else other than the fact that Jesus Christ saved me. But when these strongholds try to come against us that we once had, Jesus Christ is the only way through his help that we can break those strongholds and pull them down. So we have to rely upon Christ to help us break those strongholds. And we can do that through prayer. We can do it through a variety of ways. And let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you and I back to Jesus. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee behold. This is God speaking to Abraham. Behold, I have blessed him. I will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. Now, because of Abraham and that, he was not the, Ishmael was not the one that God wanted covenant with. But because of God's, uh, Abraham's prayers, I should say, God said, all right, I'll go ahead and bless him. So when we see people that we've prayed for for years and years and years, and we say, well, I don't know that the person will ever, be it a he or she, boy or child, ever come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, don't give up praying. Even though that is, or uh, excuse me, Abraham uh, got out of the will of God here, he still prayed for that, for help. So, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac. So the covenant was with Isaac. That was the seed. Which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. So we see that God had made a covenant with, with Abraham and Sarah. It took 25 years for that to come into fruition. But God never forgot about that. We'll see that in Genesis 17th chapter verses... Uh, 20 and 21. The word covenant means a contract or binding agreement. They made a covenant to perform their duties on time. So when we ask to go into covenant with God, there is a time limit. We have to, and by that I mean time limit in the fact that we need to enter into that agreement with him, ASAP as we would say today. So God says, I'm going to make a covenant with Abraham, and the covenant is something that should be put into, into force that very day. Abraham didn't need to think about it, pray about it, or whatever. He knew that it was the voice of the Lord. And so that covenant he was to put into action that very day, and Abraham did. Abraham took his son Ishmael and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money, every male along the men of Abraham's house, that's the ones that, uh, now I want to say something here, he had servants and that, but if he had slaves, God did not approve of the slaves. And Abraham circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day as God had said unto him. So a couple of things here. Uh, Abraham enforced his part of the covenant that very day. Now, some say, well, you know, in today's language, we shouldn't be talking about foreskin. Well, let me say this. If God didn't want it in there, if the Holy Ghost didn't want it in there, you see, God knows the future. He knows all things. But he allows things to transpire according to the way that men do it. So when we say, well, I don't know if I want to talk about the word foreskin or not, well, then you're doubting God's word that he puts something in there that he shouldn't. Hmm. Hallelujah. Move over here a little bit. We find in Genesis chapter 17, verse 22. And Abraham was 90 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. So he was 90 years old. Can you imagine that? That covenant was a very, and we'll talk about that a little, little more here. That covenant was a for real covenant. It wasn't, well, I'll go into covenant with him with God, and then later I can change my mind. No, once the foreskin was circumcised, that covenant was in effect as long as Abraham lived. And Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised and the flesh of his foreskin. Okay, so, okay, now we begin to see that the scriptures fulfilled that Ishmael was circumcised. In the selfsame day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael, his son, it was a badge of honor. God was setting him aside, Abraham, uh, 
for the work that he had called him into, and it was a badge of honor. So when God asked that the the saints, if you will, be circumcised in their foreskin, that was so they would be separated apart from other nations and, and other parts of the world. So again, when we go into covenant with God, it's a very serious thing. We may say, well, you know, I've kind of grown a little cold. I, I don't want to read God's word today or whatever the case may be. I don't want to pick on anyone. But that covenant needs to be in, enforced, reinforced daily. Why is circumcision? Well, now we're under the old covenant. Keep in mind the new covenant, we don't have to do that any longer. We enter into the covenant with Jesus Christ, what he did at Calvary, with the circumcision of our heart. In other words, we dedicate our heart, we make a covenant with him. Why is circumcision? I see today where people say, I will serve God if you will heal my husband, or my wife, or my child. So I'll enter into covenant with you if you'll do this for me. Listen, we can't barter, we can't bargain with God and say, I'll do this if you do that. That puts us on equal footing with him, and that's not the way it works. It's never worked that way, and it never will. So when we try to barter, well, God, you know, and maybe all of us have done it, including myself. But God will not honor that. When we come into covenant with him, we want to make sure that that we're doing it because we want him, Christ, into our life. If you heal my wife or my child, I promise I will serve you. I will not go back on you. Better to never make a promise, a vow, than to make it and break it. So when we come into covenant, so we want to, what am I saying here? I'm saying that when someone approaches you, we're all disciples of Christ. Whether we're an apostle, a prophet an evangelist, a preacher, a teacher, we all are called to evangelize. So someone may say out of desperation, and I understand, I, I totally understand that. Their wife has cancer or their husband or whatever, some disease. And they tell you, I will serve God if he'll heal my, that situation. That is something that we need to come out and speak immediately. Don't try to bargain with God. If you want God into your life, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, make a covenant with Him. Pray whatever the Holy Spirit asks you to do and wait for the answer. But don't go into covenant thinking that you're going to bargain with God, you or I. They make promises in time. Some of these promises seem to fade as the wind blows, but there, this was a covenant that I believe that Abraham. Now again, we're back to Abraham. This is how I'm comparing him to you and I in today's economy. So when we go back, I believe that Abraham understood this is a very serious thing. Very serious. I believe Abraham saw each and every day reaffirmed in his covenant with God and help him in many ways to increase his faith in God. So we can see that our faith is what binds us, keeps us in covenant, among other things, with with God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So I believe that each and every day, uh, not being facetious, you can figure it out, that Abraham saw that he was in covenant with God. We see again how the enemy of our soul wanted to destroy this family. So when we look at this particular situation, and we say today, I'm talking about Ishmael and Isaac, we see today we're so many people, I just don't understand. Husbands don't want to stay with their wives, and women don't want to, the, the wife, the, the live-in, whatever the case may be. This has been going on, trying to break up the family with, with, with the enemy breaking up the family, going all the way back to the Garden of Eden. They both knew better than to eat that fruit. Mmm. Jesus, they knew better. But he separated them. The adversary, he separated them. He worked on Eve until he finally, she finally gave in. And then he used Eve and Adam both to defy God. So this is nothing new. The enemy wanted to break up homes and tear up families. 
Abraham and Sarah, they wanted to break up their family, but they loved each other and the love of God would not be broken. So they followed through with their commitment of marriage. So even though Abraham stepped outside of the bounds of marriage, he repented, no doubt in my life, and asked God for forgiveness. He came back into covenant. He never lost that covenant with God. It was just set aside for a moment. So thinking that, that this enemy is just decided in the last 50 years, I hear ministers say, or preachers, teachers, whatever, the last 100 years the family has broken down, it started in the Garden of Eden. Went right on after Adam and Eve had children, Cain. Cain broke up the family by killing his, his brother. He tried to break up the family. So this is nothing new. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say when things come back into our mind, that we bring into our minds, ask for Jesus to give us peace of mind on those situations and to go on and witness for him, testify for him. We just had a wonderful, wonderful service this morning. Uh, again, it's the Arcadia Church of God of Prophecy in Arcadia, Florida. The pastor brought forth an excellent message that we need to live by God's word. Trust you've enjoyed this. Pray to meet you again. God bless.